So I just have to get over you now, even though I love you. Hey sailors, welcome back to Cruising as Crew. My name is Lucy and today we're gonna to be talking about romantic relationships on board cruise ships. But before we start, I just wanna remind you to click like and subscribe for some more cruise ship content. But as for now, let's get into the video. Ah, <sighs> okay. So romantic relationships. Oh, it's such a saucy subject. Right, romantic relationships. They're very different on board cruise ships to a romantic relationship on land for three reasons. The first one is you already know when your relationship's gonna end. On a cruise ship, there is normally about 50 nationalities. So most likely you're gonna end up going out with someone from a different country or at least a different city, you know? Obviously everyone knows when their contract is gonna end. So when you get talking to that person, you obviously figure out that they've maybe got two or four months left. So you know when it's gonna end because either you're gonna continue dating and do it long distance or you're going to end it. And obviously when you first start seeing someone, you're not necessarily thinking about, I'm gonna marry you. Well. Some of you, I don't know. I mean, if you are like, chill out, just take it for what it is. But anyway, so yes, you already know when it's gonna end. And the problem with that is, well, actually it's not a problem because I think it makes you appreciate your time with them more. I think when anything has an expiry date or a, an end date, it makes you appreciate it more. You know, when you get in a relationship at home, you don't necessarily appreciate all the time you spend together because you're like, we're just gonna do this for as long as we want. Whereas when you're seeing someone on a ship, it's like, we're gonna do this for four more months and then that's it. So you definitely appreciate each other more and appreciate your time together more because you have an end date. The second thing is that relationships on a cruise ship are so much more intense. Now that is every kind of relationship. That's a friendship, but especially a romantic relationship. And the reason is because you're living on a ship and the ship is only so big if you were seeing someone on land and you were just dating them then maybe you would see them maybe two or three times a week if you really liked each other whereas on a cruise ship you're probably going to see each other every day like even if you don't mean to see each other every day you're you're going to see each other every day like there's only probably one crew bar there's only so many places you can go on the ship why wouldn't you see each other every day? Like your cabins are probably two minutes away from each other. You know, it's different when you're dating someone on land and you really want to see them, but they live two hours away and you've just had a long day at work, you know? Whereas you're on a cruise ship, you're like, well, yeah, I had a long day at work, but I literally have to pass their cabin to get to my cabin. So you end up seeing them every day. And number three, you are always in the honeymoon phase. On land, there are realities that pop up that maybe dim down the romance. You have to do things that you don't necessarily wanna to do together. Like you have to do laundry and clean and go food shopping. And like, there's all these different little things that we all have to do when we live on land, but they're not, they're not exciting. They're just kind of mundane things that we all have to do. Whereas on a cruise ship, when you're off, you're off exploring a new place, probably with your, you know, your boyfriend or girlfriend on board. And that's what everyone wants, right? Every, everyone wants to explore the world with the person that they love or really like. And you get to do that, you know? So, okay, when you're at work, you're at work, but when you're off together, like you're on holiday together every day. You go out for lunch, you know, maybe you go to the beach and have a nice day out at the beach. There's just nothing to think about other than like, being present and enjoying the moment. So it's just so easy to be with each other. There's no real effort involved. And th that's not a bad thing, but it's just so easy to like, just be in the moment and enjoy each other. Relationships on ships normally start as hookups because no one's really looking for a relationship on a cruise, like you don't go to work on a cruise ship looking for your long-term partner because it's just not the right environment to create a long-term relationship. I mean, it is in the fact that, you know, you're always in the honeymoon phase and you have a lovely time together, but they're probably gonna be from the other side of the world and you have a time limit. So it isn't the right environment to look for your like future spouse. But nevertheless, obviously some hookups just stay as hookups and some people hook up and realize that they really like each other, love each other, and they stay together. And if you do start seeing someone on a ship 
Um, as I said, you'll probably see them every day. So a couple that have been together on land for six months will be the same as a couple that have been together on a ship for four weeks because you see each other every day, you get to know about each other. So if you've been with someone for four months on a ship, you've basically been in a two year relationship. As well as like how often you get to see each other and the fact that you do fun things together, there are also other factors that make relationships more intense on a ship. So you are away from your family and friends, okay? As I have said before in previous videos, working on a cruise ship, you just experience constant change. So if you've got something or someone that is kind of like a constant, you cling on to it, you know, because there is nothing to cling on to on a ship, like emotionally. So your feelings can grow so much faster for someone on board a cruise ship because you're away from your friends and your family and familiarity, especially if you're new on board and you've met someone, you know? it's Maybe it's a bit different if you've maybe been working on that ship for like nine months or six months or something. But if you have someone that is like a constant that you can rely on, you do get very attached. It's very hard to not get attached to that because obviously change is scary and you can be really good at adapting but nevertheless it's still nice to have something that is comfortable now the problem with getting like attached to someone and this is the same kind of on land as well as ships is obviously if you're too attached to someone and the fact that they're always there and you know if for some reason they're they're not there or you have a fight or maybe one of you gets transferred or has to you know leave the ship early your whole world like falls apart so it's really important, I think, to you know, as much as you want to spend all your time with that person, and it's so tempting because obviously they're there and their cabin is two minutes away and it's just so easy to get so wrapped up in each other and spend all your time together. It's so important that you maintain a social life. This is the same with relationships on land, but it's easier on a ship to just eliminate everyone else from your life you know um so you really have to try and just give yourself like boundaries and just be like no i am i'm just gonna go out with my friends tonight or no i am gonna go to bed early and i'm gonna have a good night's sleep because i've had a long day at work and i need whatever it is no i'm just gonna get off in port tomorrow on my own it's really important to separate yourself from this person because it is just so easy to not bother and just spend all your time together but as i said i said in a video like why i think everyone should work on cruise ships and in that video i was talking about the fact that cru working on cruise ships it's amazing because you grow so much as a person and you learn to depend on yourself but that's only if you're not depending on someone else like if you go on a cruise ship and you meet someone that's amazing but you don't learn to depend on yourself and that can be devastating if for some reason you can't depend on them anymore and even more devastating than if you break up or fight with someone on land because let's say you break up with someone on land you have your family you have your friends you have like everything is stable everything is fine so the only like big thing in your life that's changing is this relationship is ending which is rubbish but it's like one thing to deal with whereas on a ship if you fight with someone or break up with someone it's so difficult to get over because you're away from your family you're in an unfamiliar environment you're in a new place every single day you're I don't know maybe you're like friends that you've made are leaving because they're finishing their contract maybe you're finishing your contract like there's always so many things changing on a cruise ship there's always so much that you have to adapt to and that is why it's so important not to kind of anchor yourself to this one person because nothing's guaranteed so why would you you know why would you anchor yourself to something that isn't guaranteed to work out like the best thing I can say is just enjoy your time together. Cruise ships are such an amazing opportunity to meet people from all over the world and make so many friends. And if you're just spending all your free time with this one person, then they're gonna be your only memory of 
this amazing experience and if they turn out to be an asshole for lack of better words or a word um then you're gonna be like oh i wish i'd have i wish i'd have hung out with sally more sally seemed like fun but i didn't i just got caught up in this relationship and now it's over and, and look like everything's a lesson everything happens for a reason but i'm just saying be smart about it if you get in a relationship yes enjoy it but just know that things are going to change things can change like that so please don't get too attached to this person you know carry on seeing your friends carry on enjoying the experiences that working on a cruise ship gives you don't spend every waking minute that you're not at work with this person because in the long run it's just going to make it harder to get over them and look i know i sound like a complete cynic and but i'm not i promise there are so many relationships that do work you know people get together on cruise ships and they're like no i absolutely you are everything and they get married and one of you know they move to another country together or maybe they are in the same country and they make it work you know it happens and it can happen and i'm sure it can happen to you some relation some relationships work some relationships don't and it's the same on a cruise ship so all i'm saying is i don't want your whole cruise ship experience to be revolving around this one person because there's so many people that make working on a cruise ship great so you should try and enjoy all of them now the other thing with working on a cruise ship is people can be completely different people on a cruise ship i could go on a cruise ship and tell people that i drive a ferrari <laughs> i wish um and no one would know but if you get and i'm not saying that people i mean some people do lie but i'm not saying all people lie what i'm saying is you only get to know the cruise ship version of that person when you're with someone you see what they're like at work and you see what they're like in social situations and you don't get to know you don't know if they're good with money you don't know if they like to gamble you don't know if they drink loads because obviously on a cruise ship you have a drinking limit so maybe they don't drink loads on the cruise ship because obviously they run the risk of getting fired but when there's no limits do they have their own limits you know are they disciplined but just bear in mind that when you're with someone on a cruise ship you only know that the person that they are choosing to show you and it's probably a completely subconscious thing they're not like i'm gonna hide this from them but there, just be aware that there is still a lot more to learn and um, there's a lot of people you know who've finished their contract but they have been completely besotted with this person and they've decided to try and make it work you know myself included I've done that as well and sometimes it hasn't worked because actually we're not compatible when we're not on a ship maybe I don't know because of just various things because oh I, I didn't know that you know you get absolutely wasted every night or i didn't know that you do drugs when you're not on the ship or i didn't know that you were an avid gambler or i didn't know that you're not clean i mean it doesn't it doesn't matter but the point is like just bear in mind that there's still a lot more to learn about a person after you've worked on a cruise ship with them because you might think you know everything about them but you don't you only know who they are on a cruise ship and everyone you know i am completely myself wherever i am but i am slightly different when i'm at home it's a different environment you know we all adapt to our different environments for example i had a friend that on a cruise ship and her cabin was always absolutely immaculate immaculate and i never like asked her about it i just thought wow she is so clean and then I went to visit her when I was home and she wasn't immaculate. And I was like, and I did, I can't remember what I said, but it turned out basically it was her roommate that was the really clean one. And I was like, oh, okay. Not that it matters, I don't care. But the point is you can think you know something and actually it's completely different when they're on land. I really hope this is making sense. Because on a cruise ship, you don't necessarily get to see the bad side of them or like the different aspects of them. Um, it makes it very hard to get over them. I mean, like, it's like when, if you break up with someone, but you don't actually want to break up, but you're just breaking up because distance, you know? And I've done that before. I've broken up with someone because 
we're not gonna see each other for six months now so are we really gonna do this or and that's really difficult to get over because it's one thing when you break up with someone because they did something that you hate or they disrespected you and you can be like yes I'm gonna get over them because they're not the right person for me because they treated me in this way but when you're just with someone and you're having a great time and you really love them and that's you know it's like oh do I just have to get over you now even though I love you or I really like you and that's really I mean at this point I just want to break up with someone because I hate them like <laughs> like circumstance breaking up with someone because of circumstances so hard and on the one hand it's great because breakups that i've had have never been malicious or there's no like hurt real hurt there because it's like well we had a good time you know and that's that's it um and so some people might say you're so lucky because you've never had to go through someone being nasty or hating someone or having to go over that but I mean, comment down below if you've gone through this, but having to get over someone when nothing was wrong. That's hard. That's really hard, you know. Nothing was wrong, you just broke up because of circumstances. You know, maybe you try and get another ship together, but your company can't put you on the same ship together. Maybe you're from opposite sides of the world. Maybe you are different religions, so it was okay, you know, while you're on a ship, but actually you couldn't be together because maybe your religions or family wouldn't like it or whatever the reason but it's so hard to get over someone that you've only had really good experiences with like you've been traveling around the world with them you've been seeing new places having a great time going to parties together social you know you've been having this amazing time with someone and then it's like okay bye You're like, oh <laughs> oh okay it's a really difficult situation to be in and you're probably wondering what is the point of this video you've literally just been rambling well the point of this video is you know go on a cruise ship and if you meet someone brilliant but enjoy it and just don't fixate on the outcome because as soon as you fixate on the outcome like oh maybe we'll be together forever maybe we'll get married maybe i'll go and visit him in his country maybe he'll cut whatever as soon as you fixate on an outcome that's when you uh, you open yourself up to getting disappointed and hurt you know and because things change so quickly on cruise ships i think the safest thing to do but also the most enjoyable thing is to just enjoy it and not get caught up in what it could be, you know? Um, and it makes it, I mean, my first relationship on a cruise ship, I was like, we're gonna be together forever and I love him and he loves me and this is fantastic. And I fixated on like what I wanted to happen. And when it didn't happen, I was really, really disappointed. Um, whereas like, more recent relationships i've just kind of been like okay i'm just gonna go with the flow i'm just gonna enjoy it for what it is and when it ends you're of course you're sad and you're like okay i'm disappointed but you're not disappointed because they didn't fulfill an expectation you had you're just disappointed because you're like well we had a lot of fun together and i kind of want to continue having fun but okay and also by not fixating on an outcome you're putting less pressure on the relationship, which means that you'll have more fun together, which means that you'll probably be more inclined to want to make it work because, you know, whereas if you're constantly discussing about how you're gonna make it work and trying to control things that you just can't control, like, okay, when we get off the ship, we're gonna do this and we're gonna do this and it's gonna work and blah, blah, blah. Firstly, you're not enjoying just being with them you're not enjoying the time that you have together and you're trying to control something you can't control so just enjoy it just chill just know that you know whatever happens with this person is going to be for the best maybe they're just here for a season maybe they're here for a reason whatever but my advice is yeah don't anchor yourself to one person it's very very easy to do 
try and although it's very easy to want to spend all your free time with that one person try and maintain a social life outside of that one person so that if they get transferred if you get transferred if they end their contract whatever it's not going to be as big of a blow and also try not to control what you can't control if you're enjoying your time together just concentrate on enjoying your time together don't concentrate on like a possible outcome that's going to come because it might do but it might not and you have to be okay with both if you have enjoyed this video then please let me know in the comments and also hit that notification bell because in the next video i'm going to be talking about the 10 stages you go through during your cruise ship contract but while you are waiting for that video please check out these two videos here where i talk more about cruise ship life but thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next video